10 years of JDH Group in 10 minutes, or thereabout. Chapter 1. Opening a new business, or who needs money anyway? <laughs> 2001. After successfully building up several other exhibit companies in the area, Joel decided to leave the nest and branch out on his own. And since you can't build trade show exhibits in a tree, he first opened up in his very own garage. Since his initials hadn't been in use since junior high school, he decided to make them the name of the new company, JDH. But hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. The JDH story actually starts out some years earlier. Chapter 0.5 The real beginning, or how to get expelled from grade school. The year is 1970, and to Daryl and Rosalie Hall, Joel's groovy parents encouraged greatness from the young, bright-eyed lad at an early age. Between clarinet lessons, feeding his pad rocks, and the occasional Rocky Mountain goat expedition, Joel started a thriving business. That of pushing Jolly Rancher candies at school. Business flourished, with school children bringing bags of nickels each day. Sadly, Joel's business empire would have to wait. The principal banned his business and promptly expelled Joel. Not to be kept down, however, he honed his business skills playing Stratego and Mousetrap. Now where were we? Oh yes. Chapter 2. Growth Potential? Or why can't I park in my own bleeping garage? 2002. After rounding up some tools and finding a Lyle and Zorg, JDH Group was formed. As fun as it was for these three to spend countless days and nights working together, JDH Group was in need of serious expansion. So moved they did, to the bustling city of Kaysville, Utah. Kaysville got his name from a pioneer settler named William K. Originally credited to his first settler was one Hector Caleb Haight. Unfortunately his name left much to be desired and Hectorville or Caleb Town was not to be. So people wanted to call it freedom, but Brigham Young said no. Settlers had a bit of a trouble with Indians, at which point it was called Kays Fort, but after the fort was torn down, it was called Kaysville City. Whew. With over 6,000 new square feet to roam around in, JDH Group filled it with more employees. This was far more than a garage indeed. Eventually, more projects meant more people, and more people needed more projects. Until JDH Group needed sales. So they tried to hire salespeople. And tried. And tried. And tried. Until Joel said, Okay, I'll just keep selling. Oh, and Lyle stayed, and BZ left. Chapter 3. A bigger shop? or I'll try to be nicer if you try to be smarter. 2003. Working 20 hours a day was fun. So much fun, in fact, that JDH Group wanted to spread around the fun and hire more employees. What JDH Group needed was staff. They needed builders, designers, and those guys that might not look as if they're doing anything, but are really quite busy at a cellular level. They needed a firm Craig to rule with an iron fist, but soothe with a heartfelt smile. This was no easy task. With Kens and Todds roaming around, that kind of stress was almost too much for one man to bear but not Craig. JDH Group got a new logo, Western I think, that looks like a brandy nine. After all, it's called a brand, isn't it? Oh, and Lyle and Craig stayed. Chapter 4. Expanding the business, or here we grow again. 2004. Taking on new special projects, Joel decided to add a special projects manager. Enter Kyle. At least he thinks he's special. JDH Group was always striving to field a good basketball team, hence the addition of Sam in the newly formed graphics department. They also needed Sherman to drive forklifts, a Garrett to run a laminator, and a James to run after clients. Go, go, go. The year ran its course after a Heisman, two Super Bowl rings, a paintball course, one dunk tank, another 6,000 square feet of space, one Josh Cooper, and dozens of projects later, they called it good. Chapter 5. Even more space? Or we believe in nepotism? 2005. JDH Group had tried what seemed like dozens of times to find the perfect office manager. After many attempts, they chose Denise. Although a little too cozy with Kyle, she definitely brought the goods to QuickBooks. Obviously, wowed by the growing team and some shiny new toys in the shop, clients were knocking down the door and asking for new products. Utah had snow, the Olympics uses snow. Soon, this wintry combination had JDH Group involved in the Olympic Museum and ski projects galore. Mixing several new builders, one CAD guy and another married sales couple, and JDH Group was bursting in its seams. That's when they picked up another 3,000 square feet of exhibit storage, this time in the Ogden BDO what used to be a military holding facility for UFOs and radioactive experiments. Chapter 6. New Leadership? Or What Can I Do For You Today? 2006. As modest fame began to come, Joel thought, hmm, we need some good designers. Soon after, a worldwide search began with hundreds of interviews and many sleepless nights reviewing resumes and portfolios. After all this, they posted bail for Cody Creighton, and he's been the lead designer for JDH Group ever since. After nearly five years of sheer enjoyment at the company, Lyle decided it was time to make bow staffs and nunchucks. So he bid a fond adieu to JDH Group. Enter Darren Harker. So in preparing to take on the Mangosteen and carry on in the Maverick way, JDH Group added a giggling salesperson, <laughs> several new builders, and a self-taught CAD drafter named David. No, not the English footballer David Beckham, nor the Kung Fu master David Carradine. This was Carney version, aptly known as Hobo Dave. He did bring ninja-like moves to AutoCAD though. Oh, and they won some awards and stuff. Chapter 7. The Events Invasion, or the Year of Zug. 
2007. The countdown was on. Creatures of all types were seeking out JDH Group to prepare for the invasion. Specialists had to be brought in. Enter the Zug, better known as BZ. After traveling the world for several years and experiencing firsthand that full amenities just means a free shower cap, BZ returned to lead the JDH Group production team. Knowing the battles that lay in store, BZ needed some Nates, a Jose, a Jessica, and another Brandon, just to have someone to blame things on. Not to be outdone, Cody brought in a Chad, who coincidentally looked an awful lot like Grizzly Adams in his early hey, years. Sugar bear. Sam brought in a Dano, which wasn't necessarily outdoing anyone as much as just giving him someone else to blame things on as well. Oh, and they kind of had a salesman in California. Unfortunately, custom exhibits proved to be his kryptonite. Ah. Chapter 8. Moving on up, well, where did all this junk come from? 2008. JDH Group decided to spend any profits it had made in the last few years and moved to Ogden, so they packed up everything and headed north. Not quite that far, just down a little from Idaho. That's right, smack in the middle of that super fun site. Perfect. They made their new home in Building 3A. Ogden claims to be one of the oldest settlements in Utah. Some believe it's named after Peter Skeen Ogden, an early settler. Others say it's named after the author Ogmandino who kept a reading den in the city. Ogden is rumored to be where the famous quotes have been written, such as, Build this day on a foundation of pleasant thoughts. And no, Ogden doesn't have a lot of crime, just lots of people exploring potential jobs. JDH Group decided to add a CNC machine, a laser machine, another printer, a BT... Wait, really? Another Brandon? That's like... three. Three Brandons. Okay. Some computers, a bunch of other stuff that filled up the enormous 65,000 square feet of space. Being in Ogden, Joel needed they need some street cred. So JDH Group added a Beth and a Tom. Beth because... well... you don't mess with Beth. Shut up. And Tom because he's got that cool patch thingy on his chin. Yeah. After looking at the completed move, someone in JDH Group was heard to say, Ogden's not so bad, if it were in Salt Lake. Chapter 9. Hanging with the economy, or someday we'll look back on this, laugh nervously, and change the subject. 2009. New building, new equipment, new employees. Yes, JDH Group may have been stretched a little thin financially, but they did what any good company does in a down economy, such as build mini golf courses, hunt down the perfect sand rail frame, and rebrand the company image, this time with elephants. I've got an idea, someone said. Let's hire some more people. And so they did. Trisha was brought on to sell in Las Vegas. Cadman Dave left to grow iguanas, so Ben was hired to replace him. Brandon Marsh also left to model clothes, so Blair was brought on to replace him. Kyle was tired of not eating well at home, so Denise left to watch Rachel Ray each day. Yummy! And Soup was hired to replace her. Soup was so awesome that she beat out 1,500 dozen applicants. Designer Chad had moved on to pursue dreams of dealing 21 in casinos, and so Cody searched the world over for his replacement. Enter Josh, a Tanzania native. He brought his love of orange juice to JDH Group. Craig retired to sail the seven seas on a boat called Mary Jane. After a test of skill and wits, Raul beat out the competition and became the new Craig. Not to be deterred from the dream of world domination, JDH Group stepped up the displays. Indeed, JDH Group tightened their belt and kept going. Chapter 10. A new decade? Or time for another salesman? 2010. Springtime in Ogden brings many pleasant surprises, like emergency evacuations for gas line leaks or termite infestations. But life at JDH Group isn't always just pleasure. There was work to be done. One salesman stopped selling in Las Vegas, and another began in San Francisco. BZ also needed more employees, and so they hired more employees. Nates and Colby's left, Nestor's and Jerry's came aboard, as well as a Brent and a Fernando. BZ was kind of stingy, so he wanted Soup to work with him. Kyle said no. There were words. In the end, BZ got what he wanted, and Kyle started looking for someone else. More awards were won, and new projects were built in less time and for less money. Life was good. Oh, and several other office managers came and went. Chapter 11. Celebrating 10 years in business. 2011. Kyle placed several very high-priced advertisements across the country for a new office manager. With no luck and diminished hopes of finding a qualified individual, someone said, Hey, try KSL Classifieds. And so he did. Ah. Enter Julie. Fresh off a heated to raid with her previous employer. She was ready to work elsewhere. She had also learnt how to tell someone where to go. What's wrong with you? Julie was amazing, filing all the previous filings and organising all previous organisation only better. Not to be outdone, Koti wanted yet another designer. Joel was heard to say, And so you shall, son I never had. Enter Jeremy. Heading from Lehi and suffering from a severe lack of geographical orientation, Jeremy accepted a job at JDH Group and subsequently commutes each day to work. BT, you remember? The third Brandon? wanted another graphics guy. Pretty, At first, management said no. And then they said yes. And then no again. And finally, yes. yes! Enter Jeff. Not much is known about Jeff. 
He rides in helicopters, I think. And that brings us to... today. JJH Group's 10-year yeah. anniversary. Yeah. Thanks to all of their great clients and employees, they are now celebrating this momentous occasion. And that's the end, chaps. See you at the pub. Most of the previous information contained here and has been based on fact. Which parts? We're not exactly sure. JJ Scripps makes no claim or warranty for any information, factual or otherwise represented here by sound, image or imagination. A Monster Cottiscott production. All rights reserved. 2011. Your mom. <laughs>